Hi there, welcome back to IndyCar on the 11th of June. Um, I thought I should clarify one or two things. There's been a great deal of an argument on uh, the internet recently about the strategy being employed by the SNP with regards to whatever route it decides to take towards independence. And I've heard conflicting rumours from all different sides. Now, one of those rumours is that the SNP has already decided that the battleground for independence will be the next general election. Now, this is an interesting one because it is choosing a battleground for a particular reason. Now, the reason that's been given, and these are pieces of information I get from members of the SNP who've told me this, one of the reasons why they want to choose the next uh, UK general election instead of forcing a general election at Holyrood is the voting system at Holyrood is a mix of first past the post and proportional representation designed to ensure that no one party gains a majority. Now we know that famously Alex Salmond in 2011 managed to bust that and uh, actually got a numerical um, majority which was, was something which was considered impossible uh, previously to that. But the SNP in its current form, with Hamza Youssef and his current uh, cabinet in charge, and most notably with Jamie Hepburn supposedly leading the independence uh, efforts here, it's beginning to look as though their support has dropped, despite the fact that support for independence has not dropped and remains stubbornly at or slightly above 50%, regardless of what the unionist media actually tells us. But the support for the SNP as a party at the moment has dipped somewhat and is languishing somewhere in the upper 30s, around 37%, some way down from its high water mark of 45%, which it has regularly achieved, particularly at Holyrood, but also in its uh, elections at Westminster. Now, we know also that the SNP had originally achieved 56 out of 59 seats in 2015. And that was with the uh, share of the vote at approximately 47%, so getting close to that 50% magical numerical majority that is being sought. But what is uh, not clear at the moment is the fact that Mr. Yusuf has, well, he has actually clearly uh, stated that he would not do a deal with Alba. Um, certainly not in a general election because, and this is me paraphrasing his words, why would they do that when the SNP is the largest uh, pro-independence political party in Scotland? They don't need to do a deal with ALBA. However, the rumour mill is saying that from within the SNP group at the moment that the thinking at the present time is when they fight a general election uh, at Westminster, which should happen next year sometime, that the SNP would pretty much write off the two seats that have now basically changed parties and are now ALBA seats uh, at Westminster and basically, I suppose, write those off and not fight them. In other words, cede those seats to ALBA and fight the remaining ones by themselves. This is an interesting um, idea. It's not confirmed by any official sources that I've seen. But if that's the case, then ALBA would retain uh, not, the, not the seats themselves which they've got, but would certainly retain the right to fight for those seats without the SNP basically competing for them. It's not quite an agreement, it's more like a standoff, I suppose. It's uh, an acceptance that the SNP has lost two seats to ALBA and Westminster. Now, I'm not sure if this is true or not, and I guess we will find this out over the next few days. The conference that the SNP is having, this independence, um, what are they calling it? It's either a conference or, I think it's a convention. Is it a convention? Who knows? Anyway, it's not a situation where the, uh, the NEC will be deciding policy or strategy for the independence fight that's to come. Although we have heard that comes the use of plans uh, to publish yet another independence paper, white paper, coming up very shortly. The question is, will that move the independence supporting dial for the SNP as a party, or will it remain stuck at its present levels? At the moment, I remain to be convinced that this will change the party's popularity in the polls at the moment, as Hamza seems to have got himself completely bogged down in this whole um, 
bottle return scheme debacle which the United Kingdom's manufactured, presumably in order to bog him down in precisely this way. So there is, at the moment, or there are conflicting uh, reports coming from within the party about the intended uh, m mechanism for deciding what the independence uh, strategy should be. However, if we accept at face value the idea that we will be fighting an independence voting version, if you like, of next year's general election on the simple premise of a vote for the SNP being a vote for independence and counting as such, and presumably a vote for ALBA and its two uh, existing seats also would count, I would have suggested in that, despite what the SNP might say about it, that might be enough to produce the desired number of votes and get us over that magical 50% mark. But with the SNP languishing at 37%, they need to really do something about it before they can do that. So it's, uh, at the moment, it's looking a bit murky. But what I can also tell you is that the Scottish Sovereignty Research Group is planning to have their next uh, independence conference in Dunfermline yet again, which is a, a very good uh, place to have it. Incidentally, they have a superb uh, venue there at the conference centre there, the, I think it's the Carnegie Conference Centre they're using. Uh, I believe at the moment at least that it's scheduled to happen on the 16th of July, which is a couple of weeks after the planned uh, Salvo get-together, which is I think at the moment planned for Sunday the 2nd at Stirling University. So the groups out with the parties are planning their own strategies and the think tanks such as SSRG and Salvo itself are both looking very carefully at how the parties are positioning themselves prior to any general election. And I know that Salvo particularly has a, an unusual message, I think, to give in the coming weeks to those political parties. But it leaves us all still wondering what is going to happen next, but it looks very much as though the SNP will forego the chance of forcing a general election in Holyrood, something which Angus B. McNeil has been um, suggesting for some months that if the Greens and the SNP government were actually to resign en masse, they could, by changing the standing orders of Holyrood, force a general election there and fight the issue on vote numbers. Now, that would require an agreement between the SNP, the Greens and also ALBA because it would need a second vote, in other words, the list vote to go to a pro-independence party other than the SNP because the last time the SNP did an SNP 1 and 2 vote, there was very, very little in the way of votes gained on the second or on the list seat uh, count. The thing is that we have to remember that we're not fighting any general election, whether it's Holyrood or Westminster, on the basis of seat count, we're looking at the numbers of votes to be counted. And if that was clearly understood, that it would be pro-independence party votes in Holyrood, then it would work. The problem I see is that the SNP fears the um, Holyrood voting system, and they think that the Westminster system would give a greater legitimacy to any numerical advantage that they get. However, it's much longer shot going for Westminster than it would be going for a double vote in the Holyrood election. So, nobody is sure at the moment, but whatever we do, something needs to give. And at the moment, we need to decide this. And I think it needs wiser heads than mine, uh, and perhaps the think tanks of the SSRG and Salvo together can perhaps come up with something which will actually work rather than fiddling around with the things that people fear in the political parties. Either way, we await with bated breath these three major events, the SSRG conference being on the 16th of July. The SNP conference, I think, is coming up on the 26th of this month. And then we have the, um, the Salvo meeting, which is basically the heads of Salvo getting together. Uh, to decide not only on the constitution of Salvo itself, which will establish it as a bona fide non-political party uh, organisation, but also on their response to the current claims of strategy by the various parties and how um, the legalities of that uh, affect what happens next. Because at the moment it seems that all the political parties are still trying to struggle with the fact that they are constrained by both the United Kingdom's 
uh, Westminster election system and even worse electoral system of Holyrood. And whenever you're working within the boundaries of an oppressor's rules, you're really at a disadvantage. And taking it outside of these rules is obviously a way of getting more votes, more people signed up, and verifiable numbers of actual voters um, on record saying that they would vote for independence, because that is really what we're looking for here. We're looking for numbers, not seats, not political parties winning, but actual independence votes themselves. And right at the moment, there are three different realities here. There is the SNP reality, the ALBA reality, and then there are the realities of the non-party uh, think tanks as well. And it remains to be seen which of these actually triumphs in the end. But at the moment, the SNP is just doing what it always does. It hasn't really changed its uh, position. It has stated, in fact, Hamza Yusuf has stated that he wants to see a consistent larger majority of people in the polls saying that they will vote for independence before taking any strategic actions to get there. At the same time as ALBA is looking at a, a cooperation or an alliance of all pro-independence parties, which let's face it makes more sense than a lot of other things, and yet is not going to happen. And then in the background we have the think tanks we're looking at the international law system as a way of fighting independence instead, which would gain the respect of other countries. All of these things have value, but the way things are going at the moment is not looking encouraging. Let's wait and see what happens next. Um, at the moment, I plan to be at the Salvo meeting on the 2nd. I don't think I'll be able to make it to the uh, SSRG conference. And of course, I'm not an SNP member, so I won't be going to their independence conference. However, I will say one thing. and There was one statement which worried me this week, which comes from the actual independence minister himself, Jamie Hepburn who has trailed the idea of so-called Devo Max being a third option on a ballot paper for a referendum. This was mooted in 2014 as being a possibility and was thrown out by the United Kingdom and I think probably, although Alex Salmond I think suggested it, would not have produced the same sort of definition of independence or continued dependence on the oppressor state, if you like. It wouldn't be clear enough. But trailing the idea of improving the basic amount of, uh, of powers that Holyrood has to a maximum, excluding both defence and foreign affairs, has been talked about before. But unfortunately, this is not the sort of thing which should be coming from the independence minister, because basically what he's saying is, I'm now thinking about being the Devo Max minister. And to be honest with you, that does not help, because we would still be restricted by the United Kingdom, we would still be having our policies decided by the UK, and they could still take away the Devo Max powers at any time, just in the same way as they have done with Hollywood devolution so far with their own Internal Markets Act. So it's a dangerous game to play, and it surprised me actually that it came from the mouth of the independence minister himself. So make of that what you will, but to me at least, um, Jamie Hepburn's statement is a worrying development. It could just be a kite flying exercise to see how strong opinion is against that. But on the other hand, even mentioning it seems to be aiming at the soft no voting, perhaps Labour Party members in Scotland who would have preferred Devo Max to anything else. And of course, Gordon Brown has been muttering on about this for ages. The United Kingdom will probably not agree to it anyway. And I suspect that most independence campaigners are sick to death of hearing about Devo Max because it is still a choke chain on Scottish powers. And that is really what independence is about. It's about getting out from under and making our own choices and not having them made or stopped by London. So that's where we're at. Um, we are in the preparation phase, I would suggest, for a general election next year. I do not think that the SNP will countenance the idea of resigning en masse and forcing a general election, because that in Holyrood would threaten their own seats, and honestly, that would be like Turkey's voting for Christmas. I don't expect it to happen at all. Anyway, that's where we are at the moment. I'm just looking at the numbers today. We've got 160 people watching this program, so thank you for sticking with me this long. 
you should find a link to my donate button on the uh, on some section of this live stream and I hope you're finding me okay today I was going to try to group message everybody uh, but unfortunately because IndyCar is a page and it's not my actual um, online identity on Facebook I would need to make some kind of announcement of each each uh, broadcast on my own personal Facebook page to everybody out there and I'm not certain that would work but anyway if you guys will share the, the link to this page with everybody else and also if you miss it watch me on YouTube but please keep helping with the donations making a huge difference to what I can do with this program Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the summer weather. It looks set fair for the next week or so. It's good campaigning weather as well. So we expect to see more stalls, more flags, uh, and more events across Scotland as the summer wears on. That's it from Eddie Carr today. Keep the faith, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.